Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to talk about 12 romance novels that I absolutely love. I gave all of these five stars, but I just never talk about for whatever reason. I reviewed them in a wrap up some time back, but since then I have not mentioned these books in a video, or if I have mentioned them, it's only been once, maybe twice. I definitely don't talk about these books enough. Or how obsessed I am with them. So I've got a good mix of historicals, paranormals, contemporary romances. Basically we have all of our bases covered here with romance subgenres. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. The first book I have to talk about is After Midnight by Teresa Medeiros. Now I have mentioned this book recently because I recently read the sequel to this called The Vampire Who Loved Me, but this first book does not get enough love from me and that is a shame because this is a fantastic paranormal historical romance. So this kind of has the vibe of The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn because we have our heroine Caroline. She is one of the three Cabot sisters and she is a spinster. She's totally okay with that. She's trying to get her younger sister Portia married off and so Portia is courting this man Adrian who is a Viscount who is rumored to be a vampire. And so basically from the moment that Caroline and Adrian meet, they have this incredible chemistry and they just can't stay away from each other. There's also some badass like vampire hunting going on. And this definitely has gothic vibes as well because I do remember at least like the last chunk of the story taking place at um, Adrian's castle. First of all, I love Adrian the hero in this. There is something so magnetic and just straight up hot about him. And like I said, I love the chemistry between him and Caroline and both of the books in this duet have a very sexy feel to them, but there aren't a ton of sex scenes. There's just a lot of like sexual tension and chemistry that's really, really well done. For me, Teresa Medeiros's writing just drew me in from page one. This has a pretty unique feel to it. It has a very dark and mysterious vibe to it overall. So if you're looking for something a little bit different from a historical romance, I would highly, highly recommend reading this book and then reading The Vampire Who Loved Me. Like I said, that's book two in this duet. So next up we have a few more historical romances here. I want to bring up Magnate by Joanna Shoup. I read this earlier this year. I definitely went into this with some pretty low expectations. I hadn't really planned on reading this series from Joanna Shoup anyway. This is her Knickerbocker Club series and as far as I know, this is the first series that she ever published. This was with zebra historical romance. I think that's Kensington is the publisher. That must be a smaller, maybe independent publisher. I'm not really sure. Um, but I was intrigued to read this book finally though when I had the amazing privilege of interviewing Joanna Shoup with my really good bookish friend Jess from Peace Love Books. I'm gonna link that interview down in the description below because I really love how that interview came out. And one of the questions we asked her was what are her favorite books that she's written? And I think one of them was The Devil of Downtown, which is one of my personal favorites by her. But she also said she's very, very proud of this book because she said that it is everything that she could ever want from Gilded Age Romance. And so I was very intrigued about that going into this. And I ended up really loving this, though I will admit I'm kind of in the minority. I feel like a lot of people end up giving this book three, maybe four stars, but this book really worked for me personally. This one is about Emmett and Lizzie. And this one's really interesting in terms of occupations because Lizzie can play the stock market like no other. And so she convinces Emmett to basically invest in her stock exchange firm. I don't really know how all of that stuff works, like stock market stuff, but it sounded really interesting when I was reading about it. <laughs> so basically these two end up going into a marriage of convenience, kind of a forced marriage from what I can remember. Basically it's to save Lizzie's uh, reputation. And so things go on from there. So 
what I will say is that there is a healthy amount of miscommunication in this book, but for some reason it really worked for me in terms of these characters and their story. Just like with every other Joanna Shoot book I've read, this book is hot. There is one sex scene in particular that is absolutely iconic, lives in my head rent free, when Lizzie and Emmett are trapped together in a snowstorm in his office. And as usual with Joanna Shoop, like her writing just sucks me in from the first page. Really love these characters and their story. I'm actually currently reading Baron, which is book two in this series, and I think I'm loving that book even more than this one, if that is possible. So highly recommend this series as a whole from Joanna Shoup. Next up, we have a book that I know I never talk about, and that's absolutely a shame. This is Between the Devil and Desire by Lorraine Heath. This is book two in her Scoundrels of St. James series. I keep getting the name of this series confused with her Scandalous Gentleman of St. James series, but they are connected with each other. So this is book two of that series. By the way, I highly recommend this series as a whole, but this book for sure is the highlight of the series. Definitely the best book, um, in my opinion at least. So this one is about Jack and Olivia. Jack is an owner of a gentleman's club, a gambling den, um, and Olivia, she is a duchess whose husband has recently passed away, and Jack is named the sole heir of everything that the Duke had and we don't know why, we have no clue. Um, and so basically from the get-go, Olivia and Jack hate each other's guts. Well, really she hates him. Like this definitely has a vibe of kind of an icy heroine and like a flirty, irreverent hero. Um, but he's also like a ruthless businessman. And so they're forced to live together because he now owns the house that she's living in and she's not gonna move out. Um, she also has a young son, so, Lorraine Heath, we know, she's the queen of angst, she's the queen of passion. You really feel the sexual chemistry and tension between these two characters and the way that their relationship builds up into the actual steamy spicy scenes is just immaculate and perfect. Jack is a new favorite historical romance hero for me. I loved him so so much in this book. And I highly recommend this book and the series as a whole if you are looking for darker historical romances, for sure. Next up we have Lady Isabella's Scandalous Marriage by Jennifer Ashley. This is book two in the Mackenzie McBride series, and I definitely would recommend starting with book one, which is The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie. That's everyone's favorite of the series, but to be real with you guys, I think I actually loved this book a little bit more than book one. So this is about Isabella and Mac. This takes place in the 1890s, and they got married six years before this book starts, and so after three years of a pretty turbulent marriage, Isabella did something quite scandalous for the time period. She left Mac. And so now I think it's been a couple of years since then and he desperately wants her back. He's always wanted her back, but um, now circumstances are kind of allowing for that to happen. So what this book does so well is that it's a beautiful and heart-wrenching Marriage and Trouble romance, which if you know nothing about me, just know that Marriage and Trouble is pretty much my favorite trope ever. But this is also one of the hottest historical romances I have ever read. That's not necessarily because there's just a ton of sex scenes, but the scenes that there are, you can just feel the tension, you can feel the chemistry. It is just beautiful and sensual and hot. Like, yeah, really great scenes in this. I love the dynamic and the relationship between Isabella and Mac and how they find their way to a happily ever after. It's just really, really well done. Highly, highly recommend this one. Um, I think I have just a couple of historicals left. So next up we have A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I was gonna say A Night of Surrender. A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. This is book one in her Spindle Cove series, which is the first series that she ever published with Avon. And this is a book that most people give like three stars and I, I kind of understand why, but like not really. So Spindle Cove is this wonderful little like coastal village and there are just really interesting characters that live here. It's basically become known as this haven for young women who need to get away from society for whatever reason. So we have our heroine Susanna. She's someone that's kind of 
a leader of sorts of the women that live in Spindle Cove or are visiting Spindle Cove. And then we have Victor, who is the new Earl of Rycliffe. And he has no choice but to start a militia group in Spindle Cove. But Susanna doesn't really want that to happen because she feels that that is going to ruin this utopia that they have all built up. And so from the get-go, these two go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And one of the things that I loved about this book is how the two of them bicker and banter with one another. And there's just some really great scenes where uh, Victor is trying to recruit people, recruit men into this militia and Susanna is getting in his way every step of the way. Um, and I just thought that the romance was really great as well. It's definitely not my absolute favorite Tessa Dare book, but I thought this was a fantastic introduction into the Spindle Cove series. You get to meet all of these really amazing characters and you just can't help but fall in love with them and want to read the rest of the series. Next up is a book that I read back in January and I didn't expect to love this one as much as I did. This is Girls Before Earls by Anna Bennett and the tagline also says, what a girl wants, what an earl needs. And we love a Christina Aguilera reference. Um, but this one is book one in her Rogues to Lovers series. I had also read a Christmas historical romance novella by this author and really, really loved it. That one was a fake dating romance, but this one is about Hazel. She is running this pretty new finishing school in this small coastal town, um, and she's trying to build up its reputation. And then we have Gabriel, who is trying to enroll his niece. I believe she's a teenager. Her name is Kitty. But Kitty has gotten kicked out of, like, every school he has enrolled her in so far. So Hazel is definitely hesitant to let this girl come to the school. So they end up making a deal that Gabriel has to come visit his niece every other week in order for Hazel to admit her. Things go on from there. I feel like this romance really struck the perfect balance of sweet, angsty, and sexy. We also love a kind of buttoned up headmistress with a rakish earl. We love that vibe. Um, and I really like the atmosphere of this coastal town and then seeing Gabriel mend his relationship with Kitty, his niece. That was really beautiful to see as well. This is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. This is a stunning, I would say character driven historical romance is also quite chunky. It's like 450 pages. So just know picking this up, you're making quite the commitment for sure. But this one is about Viola who is a trans heroine. And this is a childhood friends to lovers romance with Justin who is the Duke of Gracewood. So earlier in Viola's life, um, her and Justin were in the Napoleonic War. She ends up faking her death so that she can now live as a woman and she is now the lady's companion to her sister-in-law. And so then we see Justin who has been grieving for his best friend since that battle where he seemingly died. And so through different circumstances they come back into each other's lives so much angst, such a beautiful and heartbreaking and heartwarming romance. This is one of those books where the epilogue lives in my head rent free. I thought that that in particular was just stunning. And this also just read as a very unique historical romance, not just because we have a trans heroine, but also just the writing, the way the story was told. I don't think I've read a book quite like this before. So I highly, highly recommend it if you are willing to make the commitment to this chunky book. I think that it's definitely, definitely worth the read. Next up, we have an adult paranormal romance series that I know I have talked about on my channel a few times, but I feel like I just don't give this series the love that it deserves. This is Succubus Blues by Rochelle Mead. This is also known as the Georgina Kincaid series. So we have Georgina Kincaid, who is a succubus. If you don't know what a succubus is, they are a type of demon that gains energy through sexy times with mortal men. And so Georgina has been alive for like a millennia at this point, like thousands of years. She now lives in present day Seattle and she meets this man, Seth, who is the author of her favorite book series ever. It sounds like this is kind of a romantic suspense, like mystery series. 
and they just hit it off from there. But being that she's a succubus, that's definitely getting in the way of them being together. And one of the things that I love about this series is this dry, sarcastic sense of humor that Rochelle Mead puts into her characters, especially Georgina. She's very entertaining for sure. And Seth is definitely a cinnamon roll hero. He wants nothing more than to be with Georgina. But like I said, things are definitely getting in the way. There's also some really entertaining side characters. I also enjoyed seeing how hell works in this world. Um, this is a six book series and it's just absolutely fantastic. Each book kind of has a different mystery and or different villain going on and I think that all of the books are very well done. I gave all of them five stars. Highly recommend the audiobooks as well. I found the audiobooks recently on Hoopla if you want to go that route. And the sixth and final book in this series completely like destroyed me in the best way possible. I did not expect the direction that the plot goes in in that book and by the end I was sobbing because there's just an incredible redemption arc for Georgina. I cannot recommend this ser series highly enough. It definitely has a unique vibe to it especially if you have enjoyed Rochelle's other books like the Vampire Academy series or the Bloodline series. I also think that you would really enjoy this as well. Next up we have some novellas by Jessica Kane that I definitely don't talk about as much as some of her other novellas but I've given all these five stars and I absolutely love them. First up we have Husky. So this is one of her big boy romances. This one is about Parker and Dawes. This one's really adorable because we have Parker who is a fashion designer. I think she won a very Project Runway-esque reality show and now she's trying to put together her own solo collection and she's finding it very difficult to find inspiration especially for her male models. So she just goes to this bar one night to just relax and have a drink and Dawes is the bartender and she's just insanely attracted to him and she's immediately feeling very inspired to make clothing for him and so she convinces him to be her male model and things go on from there. This one's just adorable and sweet and sexy. Um, definitely has a unique vibe amongst her novellas. This one's definitely not as like crazy and bonkers. <laughs> some of her other novellas. This one's just really great. Next one is a novella that I don't hear like anyone talking about but I really really loved this. This is The Pitcher's Assistant. So this one is a baseball romance. It's about our hero Court who is a famous baseball player and Pippa who wants to be a sports journalist. And so she goes with her boss to try to interview him and he shoots her boss down but he's insanely attracted to her upon first sight and so he convinces her to quit her job and become his assistant and he tells her that he will give her an exclusive interview which he's never given anyone an exclusive interview before and so she ends up going to his house steamy things happen between the two of them. This one's one of her shorter novellas. I believe it's about 50 pages but I still felt like I got a, I got a full story out of it and I feel like Jessica Kane does a really good job writing baseball romances so I definitely think she should write more of them. Um, next up we have uh, Making Their Vows which is one of Jessica Kane's new adult romances. So we have North and Grace. They are seniors in high school. I've said this once. I'll say it again. I feel like Jessica Kane particularly excels with writing these new adult romances. Something about the way that she writes teenagers, it just really works for me. I think it's amazing. And so this one, we have North who is an underground fighter and Grace meets him when her group of friends kind of drags her to an underground fight. And it definitely has like a Romeo and Juliet like star-crossed lovers feel to it. Um, he's kind of from the wrong side of the tracks and she's from a very wealthy family. And what's interesting about this story as well is that Jessica Kane actually wrote a follow-up novella about this same couple and I can't remember what it's called but it's something about their vows. Again it has a blue cover on it but you can't get that novella unless you go on her website or like through her newsletter I believe. And last but not least we have the Mind F series by St. Abby. This is a series that I ended up marathoning like the last three books in because it's a series of five novellas and man this series packs quite the punch that I definitely was not expecting. This is a serial killer romance where our heroine is a serial killer. She basically has this list 
of men who did terrible, awful things to her and her brother, I believe 10 years before this book starts. So, so she ends up creating a new identity. She now goes by Lana. And so she is just living her life, killing off these men one by one when she meets Logan randomly, who works for the FBI and specifically investigates serial killers. And one of the cases he's working on is hers, uh, but they end up falling for each other. And this is just a fantastic dark romance series. We'll definitely keep you on the edge of your seat. There's lots of cliffhangers and plot twists going on. Um, I think for me personally, the last novella in the series is the best. I feel like the way that it ends the series is just absolutely perfect and has like an epic feel to it. The way that she gets revenge against these people who wronged her and her brother. Um, yeah, this is just fantastic. Definitely has a very unique feel to it as well. So that is going to be it for romances that I never or hardly ever talk about on my channel. I hope that you guys got some good recommendations from this. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below. If you want to discuss any of these books or series that I brought up in this video, and I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you so much in advance if you do, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!